Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Nerd Enthusiast Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Chris T. Francesco, and joining me, as always, is my man, Kyle Barone. What's going on, man? Not much, man. How you doing? Doing good. So we have a fun topic here uh, for everyone. We are going to do our top overrated and underrated wrestlers over the last 30 years. So most of the time, when we do lists or we do topics, we're going to do it over the last three decades because it's really hard for Barone and I to do it like a podcast about uh, Bruno San Martino <laughs> or or people like that. Um, it's and the, just hard. The wrestling we grew up with is a, is different than Harley Race. Like, right, right. Harley Race for his time was great, but mm-hmm. when we watch it, because we grew up with Brett, Sean, Perfect, and all mm-hmm. these guys, it, it looks bad exactly. in comparison. You know? It does. Different and eras. So. For sure. And like even the beginning of like a Ric Flair career, we really can't cover because... Um, Barone, you were born in what, 84? 83. I was born in 86. So by the time 86 comes around, you know, Ric Flair is not the, like the number one guy in the business anymore. You know, that was taken over by, by Hulk. Um, I never heard about Ric Flair until he came to WWF and I'm like, this little dude, like, (laughs) how is he even near Hulk? Like I'm a kid, you know, and Hulk Hogan's a monster. And I'm like, this little guy is considered the best. And right. I was like, this um, is ridiculous. He's going to kill him. <laughs> That's so true. Um, so, yeah, again, we don't do top ten or top five. We don't advertise that. We're just going to kind of give you a, a list of the guys that, that we have and why we think that way. Um, and, by the way, thank you to everyone who, who tuned in to the Shawn Michaels tribute. That was a lot of fun to do. Thank you very much for that. Um, you know, we got plenty more of those coming up. Uh, on the 27th, which... I, I don't know what day that is, but check out, and, I, and I'll promote this at the end as well, go into our archives and check out the Triple H tribute show that we did um, when we were celebrating his 25th anniversary of being with the WWE because July 27th is the, I think, the 51st birthday of Triple H. So uh, definitely go into the archives and, and check him out. All right, so we can get started. Do you want to start with the overrated or underrated? Um. You want to start off hot, or do you want to start off a little? Yeah, cold? let's go overrated. Overrated and piss people off right from the door. <laughs> All right, so when it comes to overrated, again, guys, these are our own personal opinions. I'm sure my list is a little different than Barone's, and I know probably my underrated list is a lot different than Barone's. But um, the cool thing is, this is all subjective. You know, I think pro wrestling is the number one entertainment or sports discussions uh uh subjective thing to talk about it's the most subjective thing i think like that you can talk about Mm -hmm. where like if you look at music people say like who's the greatest band of all time and you can go by record sales concerts longevity this that and a third and even even then it's like you know you get this group of people like is it kiss acdc beatles Mm -hmm. you know um but wrestling you'll have people from all over being like Hulk Hogan's the greatest of all time to Shawn Michaels, mm-hmm. to Bret Hart, to Savage, to Fl- to so many, like Ultimate Warrior. A lot of people, it, if you grew up watching these guys, you have it burned in your mind. Like, he was the greatest then, so he's yeah. the greatest ever, you know? And For where, sure. like, baseball, you can go, who's the best ever? And you can look at stats and say, subjectively, you could be like, well, this guy was better than him. But on paper, it's this dude was the best ever at, you know, these three, so mm-hmm. he's the best baseball player ever or whatever. Yeah, pro wrestling is the kind of thing where if somebody asks me who you're the best of all time is, and I let's just say I throw out a name like Bret Hart, that guy sucks. He's not the best ever. Yeah. He's like, okay, all right. Well, I, I'm not going to argue you too much because it's what you believe. And you get that with every yeah, single name you, do. you throw out there. It's never like, who's the best ever? And you say Bret Hart unanimously across the board. It's, <laughs> yep, you're right. You know, <laughs> Exactly. Um, and then we also, we posted this uh, this question on a, uh, a wrestling fan page um, that we follow on, on Facebook that has a lot of followers. And they're very, um, you know, they're, they, they participate a lot. And I, I was really happy about that. So we'll read some of those as well. Um, all right, so we're going to start with the overrated. My, do you want to, I guess I'm going to start at the bottom and I'll go to the top. So we'll go there. If we're going to start with overrated, then we won't start with the top. We'll just start at the bottom. So um, the guy I have here at the bottom of my overrated list is uh, Sid Vicious, Psycho Sid. Um, Ever since he even went to like WCW, of course, this guy was so jacked up. I mean, what a look that Mm -hmm. Sid Vicious had. Um, And I just looked at the fact of like he's like 6'7", 6'8". 
um, 300 and like 25 pounds. He's just shredded to the gills. Mm-hmm. Um, I he, he came in with that like the hockey mask. Yes, that's he, right. Against yeah, the Undertaker. Well, yep. Mark Calloway at the time. Me, and Mark, and uh, you know he's a Mark Calloway is a big dude. Yeah, and you get this guy who's just about the same height, who's way more jacked than he is. Mm-hmm. Dressed like the fucking uh, gimp from Mad Max. <laughs> yeah. You know, he has this, like, S&M bondage, <laughs> like, gear on yep. with a hockey mask. So it was, like, an interesting look. But, but we've talked about this before. Sid was brought in on top. Yeah. And his basically whole career. stayed on top his yeah. whole career. And, you know, I and then I didn't really become familiar with Sid until he became Psycho Sid in WWF. Um, and, you know, there he came in on top. He was just so huge. Yeah. But even watching him growing up i was like god he's awful to watch in the ring he has the worst working punch in absolutely history. like it doesn't even look like he's ever thrown an actual punch in his life and i don't know if it's because he's trying not to actually hit the guy but it where he starts with it and how he finishes it's just a bad looking like it's a bad punch yeah what's your favorite working punch bright heart Ooh, that's a good one i think because if you go back and watch he looks like he's taking your head off. So does Undertaker. Undertaker does too. Yeah. But Bret Hart looked like, and he didn't never touched anybody. Yeah. You know, that's Undertaker true. had a great one too. But like, if you go back and watch like the '90s stuff where Bret winds up, yeah. and throws everything into it, doesn't touch the guy. But it looks like he's killing him. I'll tell you what, and I think of an underrated one. Speaking of underrated, overrated, I love watching Razor throw his punches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it looked. It sounds like he's literally hitting and slapping the guy in the face. <laughs> so I don't know how he's doing it to this day. I still don't know how how he did that. But Austin had a great working punch too because it was real. <laughs> when he, <laughs> he talked to him, potatoes, said he he's talked. really punching you in the face. So. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, so yeah, so Sid Vicious to me. Um, I mean, geez, I mean, there were so many times. Like, when I watched him, like, wrestle like Shawn Michaels, I was thinking to myself, dude, like, you're so bad. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to dominate. And, like, you're playing down to this guy. You can't – he couldn't sell, um, like you said, his working punch. Like, there was just – his appearance was intimidating. But once he got between the ropes, I just thought to myself, there's just nothing believable. His entrance was cool, too. Like, the the, the Psycho Sid music, like, the the Psycho sound to it. Where he's coming out as a heel, he's fist bumping people and telling everyone he's the man, and they're telling him <laughs> he's know. the man. Like he was kind of over as a heel, and like you said, until he got in the ropes. Right. No, I, I agree. Um, all right. So who is at the bottom of your list? <clears throat> um, I got. I mean, it's really not the bottom. I okay. really don't have him in order. But uh, Ultimate Warrior was a guy who was on top, brought in strong on top, mm-hmm. and he just was not a good again. It was the look. Yeah. It was the right. look and the entrance, the energy into the ring. But once you got in between those ropes, he was god awful. Oh know? my god. Yeah. And it took guys like perfect, Rick Rude, Savage, like actual workers to get decent matches. Even though the one he had with Hogan was a good match. Hogan got him through that. Got one. him through it yeah. though, yeah. But uh yeah, he's overrated too. And I, I that's another one where you see who's the uh Who's your favorite wrestler or greatest of all time? A lot of people say Ultimate Warrior, but they haven't watched wrestling since 94. <laughs> and, you know, it was just the guy they grew up with. So. Yeah, for sure. And look, looking back, as much as I can, you know, shred um, the Ultimate Warrior, dude, if I'm six, seven years old, even like 10, 12, Ultimate Warrior is like one of the coolest dudes you ever see. He's a comic see. book character. He is. You know? he, he epitomized a comic book character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the I agree. face paint, the tassels. On his arms, he was jacked as shit. Yes, and his promos when you as a kid, they're great because you don't know what he's talking about. He's just talking about the heavens and this that. And, <laughs> you know, watching him now, you go on and you're like, "What in the fuck was he on? like? What was on his mind when he was going through everything he was saying?" But <laughs> I can tell you what's on his mind. Well, it's a yeah. white powdery substance. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine steroids. <laughs> exactly. What a what a meal. Did you ever yeah. hear? I think I told you the story, but for new listeners, obviously. Um, so he, as you can tell, was probably a guy that lived off the diet of water and chicken breast. Mm -hmm. So I remember the one story, I think Hulk Hogan told it, where he, he would consider his cheat meal, he would go to catering, he would go to where all the cookies and brownies were. Heard this, uh... He'd put the cookies and the brownies in his hands, he would squish them together, and he would sniff them. 
and then he would throw them in the trash, <laughs> and then he would tell people, oh, I just had my cheat meal. Yeah, like, in his head, that would get him through, like, his, I guess, sweet tooth would be crushing up a cookie in his hand and smelling it and then throwing it out, which was like, R- that would make me more hungry, you know, but you know, we always talk about it, like, yeah, the dude was on steroids, and every anyone who's on steroids who's big, you can't just stick a needle in your ass or take a pill and get jacked. He was a gym rat, just like the rest of them were. So, you know, we give him a lot of crap for being like cocaine and steroids and stuff like that. But he's in the gym 23 out of 24 oh, of hours course. a day, you know. Yeah. You know, you don't just magically wake up after taking steroids and look jacked. Jack, you have to yeah. work your ass off You got to work your it. ass off <laughs> yes. Keep your diet in check. And that's a great story where, you know, he wouldn't even eat one cookie. Right. Where he could afford to eat a cookie. but He, he could afford to eat a lot of a cookies. A lot of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So my next guy on the overrated list here. Um was is Lex Luger. Yeah. Um I honestly I couldn't stand him when he was in WWF as a narcissist and then they literally tried to make him the next Hulk Hogan when he was like the American good old boy riding the Luger the Lex Express yeah, that, <laughs> in the early nineties. Um that I, you could tell they were gimmick factoring with him like absolutely. Let's do the Lex Express and you know do this over the top all American guy when before he was flexing in a mirror exactly not that long ago I I just never got into him and it sucks because he's another guy that worked on top for a lot of his career I mean when he first came in he was basically a horseman Mm -hmm. right off the bat or working with the horseman yeah like Um, when you look at all the extra horsemen they threw in there it was like yeah I don't even like Chris Benoit was a horseman at one point and it's it's kind of like just leave the original four and that's I agree one thing WWF did very well with their factions like DX had the two, three, and then they added a tag team, and that was it. Right. And then, like, Evolution just had the four. That was it. Mm-hmm. The Shield, three. That's it. Um, New Day. We talked a while. Like, they should add somebody. They haven't, and it's been good that they didn't. Yeah, you're right. Nation of Domination, they added, like, one guy. You mm-hmm. know, it's they haven't they didn't do what the NWO did, where add half the company into it. Right. And where the, the four horsemen kind of did that, where they were swapping members out as other ones got old. I, I agree. Um, so yeah, Luger would be next on my list. I just never got him. I never thought he could work well. Couldn't cut a promo. So I just I looked at him as a guy that worked on top for a long time, but um, just I I never got it. Um, so who would be next on your list? Um, I just added one because I'm saving the two for last. Uh, Scott Steiner's single run <laughs> as a tag team. The Steiners were good, but when he came back as Big Papa Pump, he was god-awful mm-hmm. in the ring. He could cut a good promo, yeah. and he had a good look because um, he was Ultimate Warrior times 12 with the, the Mexican supplements he was on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, his in-ring work, just you could tell it, it suffered from when he was a tag team guy. When he was tagging, his in-ring work was good. He was still jacked, mm-hmm. but it looked like the weight training took away from his like flexibility and able to do certain moves. So, like, that run was horrible and you saw he came in on top with triple h and after that program they were like see you. Like, yeah if you can't work with triple h you don't really have uh, a future because whether whatever people say or not about triple h it's just i don't believe i don't listen to anything that people say about triple h if you can't work with Trip as a heel triple h he's gonna put you over mm-hmm. and he's gonna sell he's gonna he's gonna sell the program um that's just how i felt um i mean even though his program with booker t was you can kind of look back. It was yeah. a little racist. <laughs> but, you know, he still helped Booker T probably get over because he got a WrestleMania title match out of it. Yeah. So, um, I mean, and, you know, hindsight, a lot of people say, like, well, we should have put him over, and he should have. Yeah. He should have put Punk over. He should have put Sheamus over. But it's like, so look at his WrestleMania record as it is. It's already shit. I know. And now you're taking away three more or, you know, a couple more of his wins. Yeah. So... He's got to win sooner or later. Exactly. You know? and, and at the end of the day, he can suggest himself to win. One guy makes decisions. Yes, yeah, one guy makes a decision. So. <laughs> so, you know, as much as people want to say creative control, this or that, that doesn't exist in, in WWE nah. walls. It's Unless cre- you're Brock. Yeah, it's creative <laughs> suggestions. It's, it's correct. I got control, but Vince has to say, okay, yeah. um, you're controlled. <laughs> um, so my next guy was Scott Steiner. Um, I like the Steiners as a tag team. 
they were stiff as heck. My goodness, would they literally beat the crap out of you. Um, they were legit, too. They were legit bad, oh, amateur yeah. wrestlers who mm-hmm. could go, and they were bad motherfuckers. Yeah. And once he became a singles guy, I just kind of lost it. Because, one, it exposed the fact that he just could not work as a singles guy. No. Um, you know, he, at that time, when he became a singles Geez, you're, he's better off working for AEW with the botch fest that he was um, <laughs> when he would do singles. I mean, he was just... But it's also the fact that he was so big, he couldn't move. Yeah. It was really hard for him to move. But as, you know, when he was a tag team, man, they were they were badasses. I loved watching the uh, the Steiner brothers as a tag team. Um, but when once he came to the WWF after the two, uh, early 2000s, there was just nothing left that he could give. Yeah, I really... his body was done. His, and they said know. he had like that drop foot, that problem uh, with the drop foot as well. Um, I know people would have to be in a wheelchair when they yeah. have that, and he's out there trying to work. You know, exactly. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, I, I just always looked at Scott Steiner as one of the most overrated guys I've, I've ever watched. Um, and from obviously what people can hear on YouTube, a world class asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, go ahead. Your next one. So I got next one, which. I like them. I loved them as a kid. I still like watching their matches, but they're definitely overrated in the ring. And when you compare them to other guys, um, the Legion of Doom. Oh, wow. Thing. Were they horrible? No. Mm-hmm. But when you look at, like, they weren't the great workers. Like, a lot of people say they're the greatest tag team of all time, where, you know, we say Hardys are better than them. You know, mm-hmm. Dudleys, Edge and Christian, Heart Foundation, Rockers. There's so mm-hmm. many brain busters. There's so many yeah. people who were better yeah, they won everywhere they went, and they were over with, you know, the the Road Warrior pop we still talk about. Um, their theme's badass, you know, yeah. the Water Rush. Animal could cut a promo. Yes. Hawk could not. No. <laughs> he was, you know, they'd tell him Hawk, and it's, well, and then some <laughs> Ultimate Warrior shit would come out of his mouth. Yeah. I'm never like, you know, go back and look at the, you're like a boogie, someone stuck on a wall. <sighs> that was some suffering, suck attached bullshit yeah. back in the 90s, you know. <laughs> Um, were they the worst? No, but no. were they? Are they anywhere near my greatest tag team of all time? No, you know it's kind of one of those. They're good, but they're overrated when people talk about the best ever. You yeah, know? I also put demolition. Right yeah, there demolitions too. up there. As a kid, I loved them. Yeah, for sure, because they were these two big dudes. And, and their we, theme song was bad. Yeah, the face paint was cool. I even liked their heel theme, where it yeah. was like you know, kind of along the psycho level, psycho Sid level, where mm-hmm. it was like, like had that horror movie vibe to it. Mm-hmm. But they're another one where um, they were not horrible workers, mm-hmm. but not great. You know? Right. <laughs> and they, like the guys they were with, Brain Busters, Heart Foundation, Rockers, Power and Glory were better than them. Yeah. You know, um, but they were over with the kids. Do you ever hear the story Smash told? Um, what's his name? Uh, Barry Darso? Yeah. I think his... Him, Hawk and Animal all grew up in the same area together My and all three of them bounced at the same bar <laughs> oh, no. and he said like so we'd all be there and apparently the bar was like a like a roadhouse of its time where it was like you're going there to get drunk and fight like that's what it was so he's like we would be working the front door and I, like i'd start to have a semi-confrontation with someone telling them they got to leave and as soon as the dude would say something back, Hawk's fist would just come out of nowhere and blast this dude, and they'd start fighting. <laughs> they said, like, every night they were just like, it was like, all right, we're all three of us wrong, we're fighting tonight. This is going to be a fight at this bar. I will say also, if uh, anybody wants to be a tag team in 2020, please don't come out as demolition. Might no. not work out too well on television. <laughs> no, another one. It's like, and Conrad talks about like they look cool as a kid, but you grow up and you're like, oh. they're fucking wearing S and M gear out there. You know, <laughs> they like the masks are from Mad Max again. It's yeah. kind of like they were basically Sid Vicious's first gimmick with black. You yep. know, a black mask. Yep, but, <laughs> which was cool as a kid, but you grow up and you're like, what the fuck were they selling to us? <laughs> All right, so my next one here is going to probably piss a lot of people off. It might hurt my credibility, but again, it's... Okay, so Randy Savage is on my list. I know, and you said this to me a while ago, and I was like, what? I One, <laughs> I think he was a great promo, but I lump him in with Ultimate Warrior. If you go back and watch some of them promos, I don't know what he's saying. It's Not a lot yeah. of it goes intact of what the program was. Yeah. He just kind of... He's good. He's good at directing 
you away from the what's what what the task at hand is because he's really good with his hand motions. He turns, he flexes, mm-hmm. he makes weird noises, <laughs> and um, his in ring ability. I, I mean, I'll, I'll say this: his match with Steamboat was a classic one. I will say is people forget this. Ricky Steamboat's also one of the greatest of all time in ring. Yeah, he's so that helps. He's an underrated. I'm writing him down. He's, <laughs> he's he an is, underrated. He guy. is on my thing. I mean, he had cla- I mean, Steamboat had ridiculous amount of classics with Flair. Um, so I, I just never name me one good match Randy Savage had in WCW. I that entire run didn't watch a lot of. Them. <laughs> and, and like, if you go back down and you watch them. It's just there was nothing there. He never yeah. worked with like a, a Dean Malenko or or an Eddie Guerrero. He never worked with those guys or Benoit. Yeah. Nah. It's um, I just never. He had a really good match with Warrior, albeit he's a world class worker in comparison. So it's not hard for Savage to look good in that match. Yeah. Um, he worked really good with Flair. I thought that match at Mania was okay. The um, uh, Hogan match at five was good, too. That was really good. That was a good match. I but just, that's younger Savage, too. Right. You know? I just feel like Savage only had, what, like a legitimate five, six-year run of being like a pretty good, really good performer. Mm-hmm. He didn't have like that 10, 12-year run because once he got to WCW... He was his wrestling ability was kind of irrelevant. Yeah, he was cashing checks. He got thick too. He was he getting did. bigger. Yeah, and he was towards the end of his career anyway. And I think they kind of like he still wanted to to mm-hmm. wrestle. Where in WWF they were like, not put you like be a commentator. You're you're getting older. Do mm-hmm. that. Where he could still have flashes, but it wasn't oh, what sure. it used to be. Conrad talked about this. If you look at his WrestleMania run, three with Steamboat Classic, four he works with three guys. DiBiase mm-hmm. wins the title, five with Hogan, six with Dusty, seven with Flair, eight with Warrior. Like it's Hall of Famers across the board. Yeah. He's working with you know, mm-hmm. and all of those. The Dusty one wasn't good. Dusty was. I watched was, that one recently, and it was oh geez, it was. Yeah, there was good. a lot of like crap. Yeah. along with it. Mm-hmm. Look, the the pomp and circumstance, and the charisma just ooze from Macho mm-hmm. Man. I get that completely, but I just think he's. A little bit overrated in the sense of if I'm sitting down, I could probably watch 30 matches before I pick one Macho Man, yeah. and that's just my preference. Mm-hmm. And um, so if, that's just that's just if I watch a Savage match, I'm going to watch a WrestleMania Five, which I've seen a million times. Yeah. But I like the match, you know. That's the, I will always watch like the Mega Powers Explode. That's mm-hmm. the one I would watch, and I think that's more so. I liked watching Hogan back then, yeah. so that's where I that's am. That's the on nostalgia that. kicks in. Where exactly, I remember this stuff. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. Uh, who is your next one? Um, might as well jump right into it. Bill fucking Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> Which, it's not his fault. It's not. Where, you know, he comes in, he's a fucking monster. He's so big. Legitimate one of the, badass. Yeah, legitimate yeah. badass football player, played in the NFL. Um, has a phenomenal look. He looks like a jacked up Austin, way bigger. Yeah. And... He, one of the strongest guys to ever step pound for pound, one of the strongest Absolutely. people. Absolutely, you know he picked up uh, Big Show when he was legit four seventy <laughs> yeah. and held him there for a second, and then Jackknife like that's yeah. incredible. Um, but he came in greener than shit, mm-hmm. had a good look, and they didn't let him improve. They, you know, it, he was in the beginning a flash in the pan that everyone caught on to, and they just went with two minute matches. Yeah, they go come in. Spear, jackhammer, jump, flex, you're out of there. So he, they didn't let him have those, like, all right, go work for 10 minutes with somebody, learn something, mm-hmm. and then we'll build you to become a better wrestler. When, you know, we always talk about Hogan back in the day where it's like, when all you got to do is sell, come back, rip your shirt, flex, and you're over, why would you work? Yeah. At least you got 20-minute matches out of Hogan. But with for sure. Goldberg, it was come out, no sell, spear, jackhammer, and leave. Yeah. Two minutes, the crowd loved it. Your merch sold. So why try to pull a 15-minute classic out of something? Where Nash put it perfectly, where he's like, you needed 20 at a pay-per-view, and you couldn't get 12 at a house show out of them. You know? But the crowd didn't want 12 minutes out of Goldberg. No. So we said, like, he was on top, and he's still getting pushes to this day where he's winning titles, which I think is ridiculous. Yeah. But it's not his fault. No. You know, if... 
he comes in and he's like, listen, I'm big. I want to work. And they teach him to work. He wouldn't have had the same success what he did if you see that big dude go out there and work 20 minutes with Scott Hall. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be the same. But people wanted to see him come out, murder someone, and leave. So it's... Uh, I agree. And I from he's on, he would have been next on my list as well because it's just like there's just so many things. You can go on, obviously, the internet. It's a crazy thing sometimes. If you go to WrestleBotch on Instagram... I mean, that guy almost killed someone multiple times. Multiple, yeah. And I it, mean, just a couple of years ago, he almost killed the Undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, I, I, I don't understand. From his point of view, you know, I remember hearing stories. Obviously, it's been told that, you know, he was really hard to, to get to lose. He didn't want to lose a lot. I'm thinking to myself, you know, where's your leverage? Yeah. You know, you go up against guys that are multiple-time world champions and can work a match, and you want to go in there and beat them in three minutes. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, and it's it was. I can see back in the day where you're on top, people are there to see you. Like, okay, mm-hmm. here comes the whole creative control where you got this. It was a bullshit streak, but you've never lost. You're 170 an hour or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see that. But now when he went to WWE and they're putting him on top with Rock, Triple H, guys like that, and he's still like, no, I don't want to lose. Like, we don't need you. Mm-hmm. You know, like you don't have anywhere to work. We're bringing you in. And then even later on where he's – granted, I love the squash of Brock. When he came out, <laughs> yes, beat him in it. That was like the most jaw-dropping. Like We were like, I hate it. And then the next day we were like, that was fucking phenomenal. It was. Because no one saw that coming. Yeah. Everyone thought like, okay, Brock's a monster. He's going to get his win back. He loses in a minute and a half. you know. And then the car crash of Mania – five minute title match but it was what it needed to be absolutely you know but him beating owens for the title in 30 seconds was stupid it was awful him beating the fiend was stupid his match with braun this year was terrible it was spear 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 power slam power slam and it was it was five moves and it was over yeah and i don't see that being that much different with a crowd Mm -hmm. maybe a couple more minutes you know maybe not with braun or or uh Probably the fiend wouldn't have gotten another. You wouldn't have gotten another couple minutes out of that either. No. Yeah. I I did like what he did with Dolph, even though it was a, a squash. Yes. Where the bell rings and it's super kick and he <laughs> sold it. It was like holy shit. You yeah. Know, that was kind of cool. But <laughs> um, like now, dude, you're like we're bringing. Apparently, he sells merch. People like him. I don't get it. Um, I don't either. But yeah, I think he's extremely overrated. Um, because a lot of people put him up there with like Warrior, like oh he's the greatest ever. No, he's Warrior not. could at least get you through a promo. <laughs> yeah, he could. Yeah, yeah so, Goldberg couldn't cut promos. Oh no, 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 no. I mean, the one time he cuts a promo on Raw, he starts bleeding. Yeah, because he hits himself in the because he was headbutting himself <laughs> yeah. in the back. You know. And, yes, he's, he's like, all right, all right. Before you even talk, you're already unconscious. Yeah. And he was still stuck in that old school like screaming promos. Yeah. You know. I'm going to beat you. You can't beat me. Get it? There's no like substance to it. Where, yeah, I, I do think though if. And this kind of goes back, and I'm going to throw a name out here. People are going to be like, what? Like Nathan Jones. If you throw Goldberg in like 1989, 1990, dude, he would have made bajillions with Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. He would have been around that horn with Hogan, and that would have been incredible. Uh, That would have been good money to be made there. Nathan Jones the same way. Dude, couldn't work, but back then you really didn't need to. Mm -hmm. Couldn't really talk either. God, he got money. Hogan got money out of Zeus. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, just... Throw him with Hogan. As long as he poses at the end, you're going to make a you're, lot of money. Yeah, you'll, you'll make some money. Yeah, <laughs> Zeus couldn't couldn't work for shit. <laughs> like even you know he he wasn't a, a wrestler. He was, but he wasn't. He was an actor, right? But like he no sold everything, but he couldn't throw a punch. At, and Savage carried those tag team yes, matches. He did for you know. Yep. <laughs> um. My okay. So the last guy I have as my number one overrated is the Nature Boy Ric Flair. And a lot of people are going to be like, well, how can you? You know, he's the greatest of all time. Like, a lot of people that say that now are the people that have just figured, like, just found Ric Flair over the last, like, three or four years because of his popularity within, like, sports. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go, if you're, if you're nerds like, like Barone and I have been watching wrestling for a long time, if you go back and actually watch Ric Flair matches, one, he is probably, I'm trying to, if... Maybe one guy might be better. He's probably the greatest promo of all time. Yeah. He I, has to be. Outside of The Rock. That's what I mean. Outside of The Rock, I mean, dude, like, when you look back at those 80s promos, like, I believed everything he was selling. And outside, and for that time, yeah. too. 
there was like Dusty had some good promos, but you always go back to the hard times. Yeah, you can pull up any Ric Flair promo. Granted, a lot of them are around the same same line, but it was so good. Like mm-hmm. him, like everyone says, like every girl wanted to be with him, every dude wanted to be him. Yeah, he was like the first guy to throw it in your face that he was rich and you weren't. <laughs> yeah, and, no. you know he's sleeping with everybody and you're not. Yeah, and uh, yeah, his promos are he's number one, two of all time. But like you said, when and he could sell, it was overselling, right? But that's what made it a Ric Flair match. You know, the three steps and drop yeah. was hit part, one of his spots. But like when you look at like his his in ring work, not horrible, but he's not one of the best ever. You know, no. and I was talking like when I first sat down, I said I can name ten people without even thinking about it that are better in ring workers than he was. Yeah, you know? yeah, and and obviously when you hear pro wrestlers say, you know, Ric Flair is the greatest of all time. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to take what they say. I mean, that's what they grew up with, mm-hmm. and I get that. But if it's me, every every if I've seen one Ric Flair match, I've seen all of them. Yeah, that's how I felt. Yeah. Like I can't differentiate one from the other because I felt like he had zero offense. Mm-hmm. He had chops, and I couldn't take it after watching like the fifteenth chop. Yeah, he had no offense. Yes, he could sell his ass off. He was a working heel. I get it, but. It just was never kind of believable to me once he got in the ring because I never believed that he could win without cheating. Yeah. And I get it as a heel, but he was still. He like his whole career, but, you know. Yeah, I agree. But even like with a, a Randy Orton or a Triple H, or even like if Savage was a heel or Rick Rude, I knew that, yeah, they might lose a lot, but one, you're going to get really good offense from him. You're going to get excited like for a comeback or he's yeah. going to, he's going to run the match for the first 10 minutes mm-hmm. to build a baby face comeback. Yeah. I just felt like every time I watched a Ric Flair match, I've seen them all. Mm-hmm. So um, Hogan was kind of the same way, like in the late eighties or yeah. where his matches were cookie cutter, where he comes out, throws the guy over the ropes. If he's still in a ring or something, clotheslines him. Then he kind of, he rips his shirt off match starts. He gets a little offense and something happens. He gets beat up for the next 90% of the match. Yes. And then he makes his comeback. But, like, um, you know, Hogan's not on his over-underrated list because no one looks at him as a great worker. Right. But everyone puts Flair as like this. Yeah, he'll get your guy over yeah. because he's taking an ass-whipping the whole time, you know? Yeah. And, I agree. And, look, I, I give Ric Flair credit. I mean, my God, he was, like, the last, like, world-traveling champion. Yeah. I mean, the guy, you know, would literally wrestle eight times a week, <laughs> twice yeah. on weekends. Um, I give him all the credit in the Go world for what he did. Go out all night. Oh, my God. Wake up on like a half hour of sleep, hit the gym, and then go do a 60-hour broad or a 60-minute 60 60 <laughs> broadway. I leave, agree. shower, go to the bar. You know, it was like he lived a rock, rock he was star living life. was fast, man. Yeah. Oh, man. How Holy he's hell. still alive is, you know, every time you hear like he's in the hospital, it's like, ah, he's dead. Comes back, he's showing deadlifting and stuff, drinking a beer, and it's, Jesus Christ. And I, I think I understand why, and it's weird, this is going to be thing I was watching, accidentally fell upon one of those kayfabe interviews on YouTube, mm-hmm. and he was, I don't know why I clicked on it, because the, the headline would have interested me, but it was like a four minute video, the guy was interviewing like Francine, and asking her like what it was like in the backstage area of ECW, and all those guys dying at like 30 and 40 and the interviewer, I don't even know his name, but I know he's popular. He does a ton of shoot interviews. And um, he brought up a great point where the reason probably why guys like Harley Race and like maybe even like Hogan, he's in his, he's like 70 now or late 60s. Or, you know, you got, um, you know, uh, um, a lot of these guys that lived into their 70s and their 80s. You know, Flair is mid 70s almost. Because the, the guy brought up a good point saying, Back in the day, it was alcohol, but there was no, like, pain pills. There's no pills like and cocaine. Once, and st- right. Yeah. Once you introduced in the 90s those painkillers and the somas, mm-hmm. that's when guys started popping out at 40 years old. Yeah, and they're piling all that stuff on. Right, so on top just, of the alcohol. And steroids. Yes. And, you know, yeah. everything else. And it's your heart, um, like, these guys worked out a lot, but, like, you're jacking your heart rate up in the ring in the gym and now you're jacking it up at the bar yeah you know what i mean so yeah you get like this this you know late 80s is when like it looked like a lot of cocaine was flying around <laughs> yes. you know with all those yeah. every promo outside of jake was like scream as loud as you can 
gets sweaty, veins popping, you know, and you know, Randy Savage could say good morning and it looks like he's fucking having a heart attack, you know. His yeah. face was beet red, his yeah. veins are you know, through his neck and everything, but um yeah, it's like like you said, you see all these old guys that were just drinking all the time, yeah. smoking weed here and there, and then it's like all these dudes in the early two thousands who were just eating pills like Tic Tac. That's the problem. And they're all dying. I, I yeah. think once you introduce pain pills into the mix and then you mix all that with alcohol, yeah. you ain't gonna end too well. Have you ever taken pain like prescription pain pills? I've had them for surgeries. Yeah. I'm not a drug. And you said like they were like you're phenomenal. See. <laughs> Dude, I slept like a fucking baby on them. I like the first time when I had hand surgery, I saw why people get addicted to them. Because you feel great. There's no pain. And, you know, I had two pins in my hand. Ugh. There was I felt no pain at all. I would pop one and sleep for 10 hours. I'd wake up feeling great. I didn't take them during the day because I couldn't function on them. And when I had shoulder surgery, I, I remember my lawyer came over to talk to me. about, And he asked me a question. And I just stared at him for like five seconds. <laughs> Because I was trying to, I was so high yeah. from all the pain pills I was on. I was trying to process what he was saying, think about my answer, and then give it to him. But I look at him like a fucking idiot, like, oh. uh, you know. But yeah, I can one hundred percent see why people get addicted to them because they work. You yeah, know, my it's... my wife actually told me about another one, like Ambien. She was told by you know by a doctor prescribed you know to get some Ambien to help you know sleep or to rest off things, and like she would take a quarter or half of an Ambien mm -hmm. and it would knock you out for like 15 hours. Yeah. And it's like people get it. It's like somas. They're the same thing. Mm -hmm. It gets, you can get addicted to these things fast. I dated someone who had Ambien and, um, I needed to sleep one night. I was like, let me try one. I took one and it was like, you're knocked out. Ugh. It's like taking four Benadryl or something. You know what I mean? Ugh. Like that's the only thing I could equate it to is now at least they have melatonin, which is a healthier way or like yeah. Z-Quil. Mm -hmm. Um, my wife takes Benadryl every night to fall asleep because she has sleeping problems from her thyroid and everything. But, uh, yeah, Ambien, people get addicted to that. It's incredible. It's insane. Um, so, yeah, Ric Flair, it would be my last one on that list. What was yours? I had Ric Flair, Ric Flair. too, for all the same reasons. Um, some people on that, okay. on the, uh, the Facebook page had Kevin Nash, which I can see. I could definitely see that um, one. You know, he, he's kind of lumped into the, like we talked about it last week real quick with Shawn Michaels wasn't his fault you know he was an athlete that they didn't want doing athletic things right um you know but once he went to wcw once a lot of guys went to wcw <laughs> and they were getting those ridiculously big contracts to work once a week you know in a smaller ring he kind of lost his uh i guess drive for because he was one of the guys like he liked wrestling but it was a business he was there to make money now he's making a fuckload of money so why go out of his way to work really hard and I mean, being as big as he is, it's tough to have classics anyway. He did with Sean and Brett. Mm -hmm. Taker, he got a good one out of. Um, yeah, he's he's overrated with that. Uh, another one people had was Greg Valentine. Hall of Famer, I guess, from what, but he's a little bit before our time when I yeah. Yeah. got introduced to him was late 80s. And, I mean, this sounds weird, but there's a lot of guys people are saying where it's like, well, he's overrated. Well, is he even rated? Exactly. You know what I mean? That's where, where I would put him. Is Greg yeah. Valentine a Hall of Famer? Yeah. And NWA stuff, mm -hmm. longevity. Uh, he belongs in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. But is anyone out there putting him on the Mount Rushmore or saying he's one of the top five ever? Not really. You I know? agree. I, I will say it bothers me every time I look at overrated here and I see people mentioning John Cena. It just bothers me. Yeah. Um, it I, really uh, gets to me. <laughs> so I have like a bullshit overrated <laughs> For two guys that were on that list, and I guess I don't know since we watch a lot, like, a lot. <laughs> I don't know how people can have today looking at Triple H is overrated. I don't get it. Like if you grew up or not grew up, but if you watch the bulk of your stuff from like I guess 2002 to 2007, where all he did was win, he was on top. Yeah, you can get mad at that. But if you look at before in DX, they got their asses kicked every week. You look after with DX, and even now, you know, he's he doesn't have bad matches. His promos doesn't. are good. His old promos were kind of bad yes. with the game, uh, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> like that stuff got, it was drawn out. And every, I think, who was it, uh, Conrad talks about where he would come out and start Raw off with a 20-minute promo. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay, but he wasn't a bad talker. His matches are 
I don't know. I'm a fan of Triple H. So I am I too. Mean, yeah. But he has great. He doesn't have bad matches. The only bad matches he has are with Kali or um, a guy that's not a good worker. But mm-hmm. you put him in there, he puts guys over. He works well with just about everybody. Mm-hmm. You put him in there with a worker, and it's five stars all day. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, those rivalries he had with like Austin Rock and like even like Angle. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, those matches were incredible. His matches with Undertaker. Yeah. Just phenomenal. See, the triple threat with him, Benoit, and, and Michaels. Uh, Michaels. Holy gosh. You know? and then, Even Husky Triple H was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one people have on there is Bret Hart. And All right. Matt Listen. made Matt made a good point. He was like, you're either a Sean or a Bret guy, and he was a Sean guy, so he doesn't like Bret Hart. And I get his promos were fucking god-awful. And you could look at it as, yeah, he might have been boring in the ring, but he was a flawless worker look guys i am the number one Shawn michaels person you'll ever talk to in your entire life <laughs> which means realistically i should despise the fact that bret hart exists <laughs> however he is the second greatest worker i've ever watched in my entire life <laughs> i to this day even growing up hating him i will go watch bret hart matches on the network mm-hmm. i will i will look for bret hart matches they're that good to yeah. watch you know and i love his entrance yeah <laughs> <laughs> so Listen, take it from a, a complete 150% Shawn Michaels guy. If you ever put Bret Hart on your overrated list, it's I'm going to put you in that. If you don't put Hogan in your Mount Rushmore, you are you don't exist to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where I am with Bret. Um, all right, so is that all in your overrated? Yeah, that's all. All right, right so right. underrated. Here we go. I have right here Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah. Jake the Snake to me like looked like a stone cold killer growing up like with his promos he convinced you oh my that goodness that he was gonna slit your throat in your sleep I thought for <laughs> sure he, he'd be featured like Unsolved Mysteries one mm-hmm. day and I, I, I just Jake was so good I loved his entrance I hate snakes I'm terrified but I love the fact that he had that snake yeah, yeah. it made him so believable and like so dangerous his entrance his theme song to this day is one of the best ones mm-hmm. um, again it's weird too like when you hear that theme song, it sounds like a snake. It does. For, yeah, yeah, it it's does. It's probably because it's paired with Jake the Snake, but um, oh, why can't I think of that guy's name? Uh, the guy who did all the theme songs back then. Jim Johnson. Jim Johnson was so good. Jimmy Hart did a lot, too. Jimmy Hart did, too. Yeah. Those two were so good at mm-hmm. finding a sound and sticking it with guys. You know what I mean? But, yeah, his theme is fin- – and we just talked about in the era of – blowing lines and screaming your promos <laughs> he whispered everything yep and pulled you in and at the right moment he would get loud for part of a sentence and then bring it back down yep so his promos were bray wyatt-esque mm-hmm. in 1989 which, and we all know he was doing more coke than any of anybody them. yeah <laughs> especially later on in yeah. his career yes but, so um, i i love jake um and that ddt i wish would have kept its its kayfabe meaning because it's one of the best like finishers. Go ever. back and watch when he hit a DDT on someone. Done. They were done. done. They didn't move for five minutes. Yeah, yep. they didn't like get hit with it, get the pin, and then slowly roll out. No, they were knocked out. Mm-hmm. And if you look at it from a quote unquote realistic standpoint, he's driving your forehead into the ground. You're done. So you should be knocked unconscious. But I, I remember, um, what was it? A Survivor Series. He hit the Warlord with one. Remember how juice to the gills that guy was? Yep. And he laid there until the match was over. Like yep. He was knocked out, done. And even after the match, they picked him up, and he was still shaking his head like, you know, the DDT and the super kick have been so watered down. And it, it's a shame. Yeah. It's, it's really – it bother, that those it's, two bother me because, look, if you straight – if you take an MMA fighter and he super kicks you in the jaw, you ain't moving for two days. Yeah, you're, you got to get woken <laughs> up. You're knocked yeah, out. Right. Like I just said with the DDT, you yep. – you get driven head first, you're knocked out. Correct. But uh, yeah, it's been so DDT's been so watered down over the years, and so is the super kick. But yeah, yeah, Jake's an extremely underrated guy. Where and people have talked about it, he could have been great with a title, but he really didn't need it. Didn't need it. Yeah. Um, but if they did turn him like as a full blown heel, taking a title from Hogan, it would have been a great program. And I he's think. another one of those guys, and I put Scott Hall on that on the list of not underrated, but I put Scott Hall on the list up with Jake the Snake of if they weren't controlled so much for so long by their demons, the those two minds that could have been in the business and backstage areas, mm-hmm. holy God, they yeah. could have done 
They could have created stars. Look, look at Jake came back on AEW, hasn't cut a promo, like a real promo, in fucking 20 years. Mm-hmm. And it was absolute oh, gold. It was incredible. It was one of the best, like, segments I've seen. Like, his timing was still there. What he said had meaning. Everyone was brought into it. And it was like, he hasn't wrestled in forever. And it was still like, dude, did you see that last? Holy shit. Yeah. Jake still got it, you know? Yep. I remember when it happened, I was like, I'll send you the, if I can find it, I'll send it to you. And like, ah, oh, it was, it was great to yeah, see it that. Was so good. Um, so who would be on your list? I got, um, one of my number one, one underrated guys where I think they didn't do what they should have done with him. Because he was good in the ring was Ken Shamrock. I agree. Ken Shamrock couldn't cut a real good promo because he came from the UFC where the promos were real. Like they were really, I'm going to fuck you up this weekend. You're not going to leave. I'm going to choke you unconscious because he really did that. Yeah. And he could have been slid in that Brock Lesnar spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Granted, the UFC wasn't as big as it is today. Not a lot of people know what it is. But when you put it out there, like he's a former UFC champion. People will be like, what's the UFC? Go look it up. And you're like, oh, he's really beating the shit out of people. <laughs> he could have been that Vince McMahon bodyguard type where, mm-hmm. like, his pit bull, where, you know, when the corporation came out, he was part of it, where it's like, okay, you're facing a big boss, man. He's my guy. Will you beat him? Like, all right, now we got the real guy who's going to come out there. And he should have been mowing people over. Like, he, had, I think he won King of the Ring and he won the IC title, yeah. um, hardcore title, maybe, mm-hmm. something like that. But. He could go. He He could could work. His cardio is next to none because he was fighting, you know. He was a monster. He was so jacked, strong, like one of the stronger guys. And he could work. He was Mm -hmm. a great worker. Um, So I I don't think they did what they could have done with him. I think he was extremely underrated and underused. You you also have to, when it comes to him being underused, you also, it's unfortunate it was wrong. It was right place, wrong time. Yeah. Because when he comes in, you know, you still have Sean there. You still have Brett, Austin, Rock, Taker, Triple H, Triple Taker, H, yeah. Mankind. It's like, it's, geez, like, where do you put them? Where do you yeah, slide? Yeah, you got these dudes that are, can go on your Mount Rushmore, and then you got this stud that comes right. in. Right. And you're like, yeah, you're good, but everyone knows these guys. These are who we're building. You know, I think he could have had – he just he couldn't talk. It, know, that's the problem, but – I mean, I remember watching the Degeneration X pay-per-view match with Michaels, and like within five minutes, Shamrock was blown sky high. <laughs> like at one point, he was Irish whipped into the ropes, and he was so tired, he got to the ropes, it hit him in the back of the head, and he fell down. Just... <laughs> and Michaels, you could see him audibly yelling, "What the fuck? <laughs> like, come on!" <laughs> you have to watch that match and yeah, see it. I'll have to check that. Out. Um, That's one of the things too, where it's like. I saw something where Ken Shamrock was arguing with Rude, China, and Triple H. <laughs> and he says something to, he's like, and uh, I'll do something with you. And he points to China and goes, and whatever the hell you are. <laughs> and you can see Triple H visibly get pissed off. But it's And he gives him the finger. He gives Shamrock the finger. But that was in an era where he could do that. And online, everyone's like, what he doesn't know is Rick Rude would have whooped his ass. And I'm like, no, the nope. fuck he wouldn't. No. Rick Rude on his room. best day couldn't beat Shamrock today. Yes. You know, yeah, Rick Rude was a bad motherfucker and he beat up dudes in bars. Shamrock beat up dudes in cages. He's lumped in with the, no one's touching Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley, Matt Riddle. These guys are, they, they're they trained killers and they've done it at the highest level. Ken Shamrock would have fucked all three of them up. At the same and time. And not even broke a sweat. <laughs> You know, um, and that's where, you know, they should have, I'm sure the UFC at the time would have gladly accepted a package from Vince to use highlights on his, like, vignettes and stuff. I agree. Because they weren't anywhere near the juggernaut they are today where they don't need that money. You know, in 96, 97, they were kind of broke. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny when people do say, oh, man, Ken Shamrock's so lucky. And I love looking back and saying, guys, that all three of them, would have been on the ground on, sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been nighty night. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> listen, I'm a wrestling fan. They're tough guys, and I'm sure they'd whip my fucking ass any day of the week. But Ken Shamrock in 97 is tearing through that whole fucking locker At, room. He was prime yeah. Shamrock in mm-hmm. like 97 to like 99. Yeah, you ain't going. Nah. Nah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the only guy that would have competed with him maybe would have been like if Kurt Angle was there. Yeah. That's it. Was, 
because his, he'd know how to wrap them up. His wrestling could have, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, so the next guy on my list is Kane. I think Kane gets a bad rap. I think it's because of how long he's been around and also some of the dumb shit they've had him in. Yeah. Um, I think... But Isaac Yankum was a phenomenal gimmick. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Without <laughs> Isaac Yankum, we might not have gotten Kane. True. To be honest. So, I, to me, I think Kane's the kind of guy that should have been booked like The Undertaker his whole career. Yeah. A very special character. Um, because the fact that that character came in like he did, and if you go to the archives, we talk all about it in our Hell in a Cell episode. Um, you bring him in on top like that, and you bring him on top with Taker, you've just solidified the guy's whole career. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know why he didn't work on top for as long as he did. I mean, it got really cartoonish. You know, you get to the Katie Vick thing he was part yeah. of. You get to him doing an 04, like got Lita pregnant. Like, mm-hmm. dude, this is one of your greatest character creations of all time. Yeah, he got lumped into where you said, like, he should have been special, like, with Big Show. Yeah. They were yeah. both on TV way too much. Agreed. And then when they started losing, it became like, no one's believing that Kane's winning this week, you know, when he's the same thing as The Undertaker. I agree. I, I agree with you. And it's it just, it, that bothered me. The whole use of Kane, you know, my, my wife just... To this day, anytime we talk about fun stuff, she always brings up her love for corporate Kane. <laughs> and, like, I always think she's joking, but she, like, legitimately loves corporate Kane. It's... And I'm like, how do you like corporate Kane over a guy that comes out from under the ring with a mask on and fire? Yeah. She's like, I don't know. I just. Throwing fire It's so face. funny he's... knowing that he was Kane, and now he's wearing a suit and tie. Yeah, he's wearing dockers <laughs> with a leather belt. And now he's yeah. the, the mayor of a. Of, 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 yeah, of Knoxville, Knox Tennessee. In Tennessee. It's um, insane. It is. You think but, about it. So Kane, to me, I put underrated because I'm not sure he's he's kind of like Undertaker where he doesn't need titles. But it would have been cool to have him as a world champ because he could also cut promos. He had a one-day reign. He did. He beat Austin <laughs> and then lost it the next yeah, night. It was, you know, that's tough. Um, he made a lot he, of money those two yeah, nights. <laughs> he had a lot of world title. Yeah. But... The WWE Championship, he only won that one time. And yeah. It was like a, you know, and it kind of had to because they put it, it was a first blood. And if Kane lost, he was out of the company, I think, or something like yeah. that. So this guy's two years in. He's definitely winning, you know. Agreed. Who's on, uh, who's next on yours? So I got, um, who I really enjoyed, I think he was an underrated worker, is Billy Gunn. Wow, that's a good one. I didn't even He's, think of him. And I've heard, you know, Bruce talk about where he had uh, asthma and needed an inhaler. Oh, wow. So he couldn't be a singles guy and go 25 minutes. That's why you only saw him in tag teams. But he was a big dude. He could go. He was fast, strong. Still, was, yeah, to this day. He's believable in the ring. Um, one of the best tag teams. Agreed. Yeah, uh, Hands down. Yeah, with him and uh, Road Dog. Mm-hmm. Uh so you didn't like the smoking guns. <laughs> That's no, what I was, was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> or Billy and Chuck. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I mean, the smoking guns was a cool way to bring those guys in because they look the same. They're both the same size. And then Bart went and got fucking oh, knocked in the next got week. Got by <laughs> Yeah, which kind of buried him. But Raw for all. Um, yeah, I was always a fan of Billy Gunn where I thought – when he was in the ring, he was good. He couldn't talk. Mm-hmm. That's why he only had, you know, in the whole uh, New Age Outlaws thing, he only said, One we thing. got two words for you. That was it. <laughs> Everything else was road dog. But, um, yes. yeah, I think he's an underrated uh, wrestler, underrated worker. Um, do I think he's, again, right place, wrong time? Was he ever beating Austin Rock, Undertaker? No. But is he a solid intercontinental champion? Yes. Tag teams, put him in all day. Mm-hmm. They're great. But, yeah, with his asthma, um, now I understand why he never got that singles push. I will say, even though he has asthma, he could still get you more than Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you could you could make it work. Mm-hmm. You're the biggest company in the world at, at the character machine, and, you know, you can get that done. Um, my next guy on this list, I think does not get mentioned ever, is William Regal. Yeah. I always loved William Regal. I also thought he was always a really good promo. Mm-hmm. And then when you get into the early to mid two thousands, you see how funny he is. Yeah, such a great character. Um, yeah, when he was doing the general manager. Oh my stuff god, he was so funny working with. Uh, oh, what the hell was the dude's name? The Tarantula. 
to Tajiri. Tajiri. Oh yeah. god, that was so he funny. Was, <laughs> that stuff was great. When he's pissing in his coffee and stuff. <laughs> I just thought, um and he was also a believable worker. Mm -hmm. Like when he would throw those left forearms, I thought to myself, Oh, oh damn. He's <laughs> it's it's a it's a shoot right now. Yeah. Um so And I, he exposed Goldberg in WCW. Yes he did. Big, big time and he said he was like, What do you want? The guy me to punch myself? Like Goldberg just stood there and did nothing. Yeah. He's trying to work a match with him and it showed like yeah, look wise, Goldberg's on another level, yeah. but in ring work, William Regal is one of the best. You know, he was great. <laughs> you gotta give William Regal credit for the balls that he had. Because mm -hmm. if Goldberg like snapped He's killing for him. a shoot, <laughs> yeah. he's killing him. He's killing him. But the fact that Regal like stood in there with that guy mm -hmm. and took those shots, like, good for you, but yeah. um I thought Regal never got a fair shake in the WWF. I know he was you know, he was shown on TV. He had a lot of TV time, which was good. I know I know Vince gave him a lot of television time. But from a worker standpoint, I, I, I liked William Regal. I thought he was a very underrated character. He was great as a European champion. That was like fit the bill. That champ that belt was like meant for him, you know. I agreed. Now I'm not sitting here on the show and saying, Look, William Regal for world champion. No. That, no. Yeah. Um, although it would have worked well when they go to England because they make buco bucks when they mm -hmm. go overseas. Um but Look, I still think he should have gotten a bigger role. I mean, from what we all know by now is, you know, he had a little bit of a drug issue, which might have prevented him from from getting pushed. But um, yeah, uh, I, I put William Regal as a very underrated character. Yeah, I agree with that. So, who's your next? Um, I got a guy who was in the Shamrock realm where he's extremely underused is Sheldon Benjamin. Oh, he's my number one actually. Yeah, if you watch any Sheldon Benjamin match, it's good. Wasn't a great talker, had a good look. In ring, he was phenomenal. He was. Um, you watch any ladder match or Royal Rumble match, Jeez. he's doing some crazy athletic shit where he gets in a ring, runs, jumps, both feet on the top rope, like, you know, and grabs guys, double suplex. Mm -hmm. um, the ladder matches was like where a ladder's laying there and he just runs up the rungs without touching anything. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'll watch those. And my wife, who really doesn't watch wrestling that much, will be, like, amazed at the stuff he's doing. No, for sure. So he um, uh, definitely should have got a bigger push than what he – I see champ. I think he's had some tag titles, but – Yeah, it's and – and I agree with you. Shelton Benjamin I put on top of that list. You know, even when he was with the world's greatest tag team with Charlie Haas, my God, those two could go. Mm -hmm. I mean, credit Kurt Angle, too, for probably helping them along. Um, which was good. Um, but and Sheldon Benjamin had a he room with Brock Lesnar in college. Like he was a legit amateur wrestler. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife just walked in the room, and I don't. I guess she probably didn't hear my 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 putting over corporate Kane. Oh, I heard it. If you talk about corporate Kane, I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that so Shelton Benjamin to me is like you're right. All those Money in the Bank ladder matches. Like he used like a ladder one time as a springboard, mm -hmm. and it was just incredible. And I just thought to myself, this is a guy that I just never thought got got his due. And I, you know, we didn't mention this, but at the end of the show, I need to get, and don't get mad at me for this, but I never got your top five favorite, like, Shawn Michaels matches. We didn't do that oh, in the show. okay. But I, I went on Instagram, and I posted something on the Hot Tag Podcast giving my five favorite matches of Shawn Michaels ever. My second favorite Shawn Michaels match of all time was his Raw match with Shelton Benjamin. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, oh, you know, yeah, it's, it's the one with the super kick. Go back and watch that watch match. Watch the whole thing. That, Conrad said it perfectly. He's like, you come for the super kick, you stay for the match. Yep. the match is good. Yep. But and the ending is just like, you forget about everything that just happened because the ending. That's the greatest super kick ever. Greatest. The timing on that for oh. him not taking his head off and Sheldon Benjamin selling it the way he did was it was so fucking good. Yeah, like, just think of it now. Yeah, I mean, Sheldon Benjamin, he did the selling part great. I mean, his job really was just to springboard himself. For Shawn Michaels to not kill a man with that super kick, or at least knock him out, I remember Shawn Benjamin saying, it never touched me. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, <laughs> how good do you have to be yeah. to not kick a man's face For off? For those because, two to line up that spot, like, you know? Oh my gosh, and it's just unreal. Um, that's my second favorite Shawn Michaels match of all time. Um, but one, that match you'll see if you have a guy... Shelton Benjamin's working with someone who's better than him. Dude, like, Benjamin, one, his athleticism is unmatched. Mm -hmm. And in that match, you could see just how athletically gifted he, he is or was. Um, but to me, Benjamin should have been a guy that should have probably had a 
a rocket strap to him for a little bit just to see where he could go. Um, but, you know, we won't get into, like, a political aspect of what that probably was. But um, it is what it is at that time. Fucking Vince. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so that's where uh, I put Shutton Benjamin on the top of my list. Um, but, uh, yeah, who would be uh, next for, for you? Uh, next one I got, and a lot of people had him as overrated. Hmm. I don't think he ever really is in that category. But I was always a fan of him was X-Pac. I agree. Oh, what a worker. He's such a great worker. Um, and considering he's only had one job his whole life, he said, he started working, like, wrestling at 14. 14. Yeah, he was, like, Same putting the ring. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the Hardys did, too. Yeah. But, like, putting a ring together, being part of the ring crew, he said he lied about his age to get matches at, like, 16 or 17, stuff like that. And you look at, like, the one, two, three kid. He's a poster child for a good jobber. Yes. But he had... His match with Bret Hart is one of the best matches. And it was, you know, Bret Hart was on top of the world. He's working with the one, two, three. God doesn't even have a name. You know what I mean? Yep. And if you go back and watch that match, it's Bret Hart shakes his hand afterwards. Yeah. Something you really didn't see back then. Yep. That match was so good. And Razor putting him over. But, like, even ignoring all that stuff, as X-Pac in DX. So good. He was so good. And underrated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had one of the best uh, returns. Yeah. Or debuts, I guess you could say, ever when he comes back during the Monday Night With Wars. DX. So yeah. he was very impactful. And you hear a lot of people say all the time just how, like, of a flawless worker. Like, they always said he was your your sticking point. Mm -hmm. If you couldn't work with Sean Waltman, then you don't belong on the roster. Yeah. He's kind of, yeah, that, like you said, the, uh, the book, the benchmark or whatever. Where the benchmark, that's they'd it. they put someone with him and then be like, how was he? Right, and exactly. And Sean Waltman would be like, nah, he's good, he can go. So I think he's... And I don't agree with him being with the NWO going into the Hall of Fame. You know, I agree. That's just that's me. A, uh, when I think NWO, H influence there. yeah. <laughs> when I think NWO, it should be the three, that's and it. that's it. And Bischoff. Bischoff, yeah, yeah, that's it. But like, when you think about like, who are the three NWO guys, or who are the NWO guys? That's, that's Hogan Hall, mentioned. Nash, and then there's thirty other ones. You know, it's but, a shame nobody views Virgil as well as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> yeah, who, who do you got next? My last guy that I have written down here is Virgil. Now he should have had at least two. No. <laughs> I mean, he was on some top programs with Hogan and Million Dollar Man, <laughs> so he did get his in there. <laughs> yeah. God, he just tug along everywhere he, he could. <laughs> Gets the WCW, somehow ends up with the NWO. My God, because DiBiase was there with him. Oh my Wasn't God, he that's like right. their their like their financial advisor? Finan yeah, and it's. Uh, God, <laughs> so bad. Um, the last one I have written down here is a guy that I think should have had multiple world title reigns by now is Cesaro. Yeah, I he's think on my list. I think Cesaro is one of the most one. My God, is he just you know cock strong as mm -hmm. Conrad would say from you know people from Alabama would say cock strong. <laughs> I that dude man is uh, you know I don't throw the word mutant around. He's a mutant. Strength wise, he's a mutant because he holy does, cow, he's in shape. He's big, but when you see him standing on the second row, picking guys up off the apron from the outside, suplexing them like like that's freak strength. It is. And he picks up Kali. He picks up the Big Show and does the spin the swing. Lift. Yeah, like that's you know next level it's freakish. Man. Yeah, it's pound for pound. They always say this, but he's one of the strongest guys. Out yeah, there. It, I look. I know he. I really don't know if he can cut a promo or not because I don't think he's ever been given an adequate chance to do so. No, I remember the one time he came out and they gave him a mic and let him talk. And he, we were like, oh, come on. Yeah. He was like inside these four ropes and it was just like, oh, dude, like, this, is, <laughs> this is your spot <laughs> to show that you can talk. And he's had the other one. It was like a pre-show where he talked and it was just awkward. Uh, you know, his, his promos aren't great whenever he does get the chance, but – then sticking with someone, you know, I think didn't they try sticking him with Heyman? Yes, for like yeah. thirty seconds. It was a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. They were Ryback, and it was. Really? Um, but oh, you guys, Ryback should have been on my overrated list. Yeah, he's <laughs> for the time. He was the next warrior oh. or Goldberg, you know. And... He ended up being renegade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So for me, like Cesaro, one. He might be one of the greatest tag team wrestlers of all time. I mean, that mm -hmm. when he was with Tyson Kidd, they were incredible. They were. Him and Sheamus oh, were Him great. and Sheamus were so good. Those seven matches they had leading up to them becoming a tag, 
I thought it was going to be so stupid. Yeah. But I think they went to each other and were like, we're going to steal the show every single... Sheamus is a great worker, too. Um, Absolutely. And putting those two together, it looked so stupid on paper, but every night it was like, we were trying to watch that match. Mm -hmm. You know, because it was such a good... And then they ended it in a draw, and it's like, come on. I know. Then they put them together, and we were like, well, they're both buried. This is yeah, stupid. It's... And the bar was great. The they bar were a was great so tag good. Team. I love them. And... That's another guy I should have put on my underrated list with Sheamus. Mm -hmm. He came on on top working title matches with Triple H. Yeah. And, you know, he wins a couple world titles, um, you know, w working with Hunter. Um, you know, then he was like King Sheamus, which he was really good at too. Yeah. He was a good promo too because he also had a little bit of comedy in him, mm -hmm. which I, I like that about Sheamus. And he could work. He was stiff. Yeah. And he could – I mean, it's... he was known for kind of taking little cheap shots. He but... had the, – the program he had with Wade Barrett too. Those two were great together. Yep. And we said these two are um, right place, wrong. They should have been in the Attitude Era having Hell in a Cell matches, just kicking the shit out of each other. Because yep. they beat the shit out of each other in a regular match. And you could tell they liked working with each other, too. Because, mm -hmm. like, those those shots to the chest on the ropes, oh. they were stiff. Yes. Where you see some guys would unhook their one arm and start to protect themselves. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> he was laying them in. You'd see the red spots. But, like, yeah, he was a guy where... He would have been better in the heart of the ruthless aggression era, yep. in the attitude era, because he had a great look too. You know, the pale white, bright red hair, and then when he came back with the mohawk and the beard was great. You know, I agree. His new theme, I think, is badass. I love it. I love the new theme better than I do the the last one. Mm -hmm. I um, I agree. Um, well, that's it for my list. Who was la who's on your still? Um, these are some of the guys that people were putting on mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, Owen Hart. Oh, was God, an extremely an underrated yeah. worker. I mean, when you go back and look, his work in the ring, another guy who's technically flawless, had great matches with everybody. I never liked his character. Uh, I never yeah. liked the King of the King of Hearts. I thought like the cockiness was over the top. Um and I get what he was doing. He was great with Davy Boy in that tag team. Yeah. Um he's had tremendous matches with just about everybody you put him in a ring with. So Owen Hart's extremely underrated, um, and we all get why he's not in the Hall of Fame, but he would be in under, oh, well, different, absolutely. under different circumstances. Yeah, absolutely great. Um, Dolph Ziggler is something. Very underrated. He's a... Boy, he's gotten the shit end of the stick. Uh, over and over, over again. again. Yeah. Even uh. when he won the world title, one of the greatest cash-ins in history. Yep. Because his mu music hit, the place went fucking nuts. When he wins the title, the place goes nuts. Yep. And then he's losing to Jack Swagger and all these people. As the champ, non-title matches, why? Yeah. His selling and working, he's a perfect, Mr. Perfect, Shawn Michaels mix. Agreed. He's good. He's a little over the top trying to be Shawn Michaels with yes. the show Stealer and stuff like that. But he name a bad match he's had. You know, I can't. his selling's great. He flops all over. He makes you look like a million bucks because when you hit him with something big, he looks like he's dead. Yeah, like when Goldberg speared him, I thought he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Like when he gets hit with like that, it's like a springboard or something, like he flies. Oh, my God. I know. The hair whipping is so Mr. Perfect-esque. Mm -hmm. um, he's extremely underrated. Uh, another guy people have is Miz. Miz gets the shit end of the stick because... He's a reality guy. Yeah. Like he came from... He, now kids will know him as The Miz, but like when he first came in, it's like, that MTV guy? Yeah. Yeah, I remember him running around talking about how he's The Miz. I'm like, that I remember that. fucking stupid. I know. Because I used to watch Guilty Pleasure back in the day. It was, you know, Real, real world. world. Absolutely. Everyone watched Agreed. it. Agreed. He was a fucking monster dork on there. And I was like, he's <laughs> never... And then when they put him on there, I was like, sweet. WWE's cashing in on his semi-fame. He's still in a company 17 years later know. or 15 years, whatever it is. He won a world t I mean, yes, it was built to be something else, but he did headline a WrestleMania he did. with John Cena. Mm -hmm. And he's um, had title runs. He's had IC. He's had television shows. He's great on the mic. Oh, yeah. And he landed a fucking dime piece from being a wrestler. You know, his wife's a smoke show. <laughs> yes. And they're, you could tell they... They're such a great couple on like the when I read do watch the show Miz you can tell they really do love each other and they yeah. like being around each other, um, but yeah he's extremely underrated I think I I yeah when you when you talk about it he had one title run when reality 
He was hot for a while. A they should have gotten a lot more out of that, especially Dude. with how much media he does. Mm-hmm. You could. He says he's the guy who never says no. Right. Like whenever Vince is like, "Hey, can you do?" Yep, I'll do it. Whatever it is, he does it. And he's had some shitty movies, but he's still yeah, exactly. He's cashed. He's, in, that direct deposit is very mm-hmm. active. He's making the money now. <laughs> um, he'll be a guy, and like he said, he never gets hurt. Um, and the the shoot work promo he cut on Daniel Bryan. Holy cow. Was fucking great. It was yep. one of the best you'll ever hear. Cause it was I agree. passion from the heart and it looked real. I don't know to this day if it was a full work or if it was like a start get flipping out on him. And he just went off the rails and turned it up to 10. Cause it, you could tell it was kind of a work after Daniel Bryan walked away and he's like, don't you walk away from me. That's such a, a scripted line. Yeah. But then he turns to the camera. He looks like he has tears in his eyes talking about basically everything like coming to the top where he should have had this bigger push. I've been here the whole time. I don't get hurt. I'm, I do whatever the company wants me to Like that was such a great, like, and everyone else just kind of stepped back. Like, let him go. Just let him do his thing until he's done. See how good it is when you let people be themselves. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, just sit, don't curse. Uh, exactly. You know what I mean? Don't curse. Do not curse. And if you let one slip, we'll bleep it out. You know what I mean? Exactly. But it's like, Agreed. as long as you're not out there motherfucking someone up and down on TV. I agree. You should be good. <laughs> but uh, another one people had was Cody Rhodes, which now he's doing his thing in AEW. Um, but he was underrated and underutilized. When he was in the WWF, yeah, I agree. You know, it's legacy was good, but it never turned into anything. No, and legacy was good. Um, him and DiBiase were great, a great part of that. Mm-hmm. But like, Orton was already a made man, so you know who it was built around. Mm-hmm. If it was like, if Orton was younger and all three of them came in together, it would be. Uh, I thought it would have been better. You know how. We're like, or if he groomed them like how Evolution did, but they split yeah. those guys up. But it was Legacy was more like Orton's the focal point, and these two are my bodyguard. It was people. like I don't want to compare them because these guys are, I mean, DiBiase and Cody Rhodes are better. But it was like when Edge had the Edge Heads, yeah, which was uh, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Mm-hmm. Obviously, not to the level. I mean, Ted DiBiase is out of the business, but I mean, not to the level of like a Cody Rhodes. Or even like what Ted DiBiase would have been because he could have been great. Yeah, he, he had, had that great look. look. Um, but um, that's kind of what it was. The focal point was Edge. The focal point was Orton. Orton. Yeah, it was to make them bigger heels. Mm-hmm. So and the yeah, other two were sense. kind of like an afterthought. It was like, um, let's get the heel and there's their little his little chicken shit followers. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Um, I mean, Stardust was probably, I guess, was popular. I mean, it, he did it for a while, but... Man, that's not what I want a third generation. No. It was cool at the beginning for them tagging. It sh- And it, the internet wanted it so bad. It should have led to a Cody, Dustin, WrestleMania blow-off. Yeah. Not main eventing it. No. Don't even need a title. But those two brothers, everyone knew they were brothers, um, would have been a great match. Everyone wanted it. And in AEW, we got it. And a 67-year-old Dustin <laughs> Rhodes... Still put on a he could go. That yeah, dude, he can. He's another underrated guy. One of the top. Really think about is he's been so good his whole career. Mm-hmm. Um, One of the greatest characters ever. Yeah, that match he had with Randy Orton, like I don't know, five six years ago yeah. or something like that, where everyone's like Orton can go. He's one of the best. Yeah. But like apparently when he walked backstage, standing ovation. Wow. You know, and he lost. Mm-hmm. But it was like a dude. You can still do this. You're still that good yep. at. 40 some years old you know agreed um but yeah that's where that should have gone in but in all honesty what he's doing now is better for him mm-hmm. and i think aew is better for the wrestling business because again it gives someone for wwe to go it's always against. alternative it's always exactly. good to have an alternative and it's a good spot outside of impact for the boys to go if they do get let go mm-hmm. or unhappy you know so agreed um and another one people had on there was scott hall Hmm. I don't think he's underrated. Um, I'm going to say he can't. There's just no way I can put him there because he was huge in WWE as Razor Ramon. I mean, he's still marketed. He's still known as Razor Ramon. Yeah. And then he was part of the greatest faction of all time. Yeah. So it's hard for me to put him as underrated because his demise was his own doing. Mm-hmm. It's It wasn't necessarily the, the business just didn't rate him. As well, yeah, he he was a solid Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, 
could he and probably should he have taken a title from Sean Diesel or Brett? Yeah. Had at least one championship run? Yeah, because he was over it. He sold a lot mm-hmm. of merch. Um, he could talk. Great look to him. Great finisher. Great in the ring. Big dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he could have good matches with a lot of people. So, I think, yeah, I can throw him in that underrated category. Okay. And, uh, I got another. You say that. Yeah, that makes sense. I get, I get another kind of category. Like, I had my bullshit overrated who <laughs> I didn't agree with. So, here's two guys that I see, and you can make cases for them being both over and underrated. John Cena. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. Yeah, you now, and I talked about Hogan. You can say overrated because neither of them were in ring Shawn Michaels, in ring Bret Hart, mm-hmm. in ring Perfect. These guys, they didn't have to be. Hogan didn't have to be. Cena didn't have to be. These were the top guys. Are they? Are you going to get five star classics out of them? No. Are you going to have the? I think it was Al Snow. We talked about this before. WrestleMania three. What's the best match on the card? Savage and Steamboat. What's the? What did people? What were people there for? Hulk and Andre. Hogan and Andre. Match is terrible. Yeah. But it got people there, yeah. and the rematch drew the highest rated wrestling match ever on TV. Mm-hmm. After yeah. seeing that in ring garbage, <laughs> you know what I mean at WrestleMania three. But marketability for these guys, you know, it's unmatched. Now you could say they're underrated because Hogan, you saw in Japan, have good in ring matches. So people say he's a shit worker. Like we just said, he didn't have to be a good worker. But when he needed to be, yep. he was a good worker. He did it in Japan. He did it with Savage. Um, Cena's the same way. Yeah, in like the run of his career, and in the early, he was green. Yeah. And he couldn't go. And like the famous thing Triple H said when he came back, he was like, how was it? He's like, you want me to be honest? It sucked. It was shit. Because he wasn't good yet. If you watch him with like later on in his career, with granted he's in there with workers, but like Daniel Bryan... Shawn Michaels, he had a great match with Angle, AJ Styles, Jericho, Orton, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens. They had just classics. Cesaro. He had yeah. a great match with Cesaro. Where afterwards, he grabbed the mic and said, "You saw it, like not on TV, but where he's like, why isn't this guy being pushed more than what he is? You should be a top guy, you know, right there shows." But Cena has had great. Yeah, has he had stinkers? Of course, of course. everyone has. You know, is he a Bret Hart, Chris Benoit? No. no. But he's not as awful as everyone says he is. But he's had the greatest run in WWE history. Greatest run, yeah. And he's been on top. 15 straight years of on top. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. 16 title reigns, who's the only person that's had that is Ric Flair. Yep. You know, um, where he's had the confidence of Vince McMahon to be on top, where, like we talked before, Punk had the belt and he's going against Jericho, and Cena's wrestling fucking uh, Laurinaitis as the main event, you know, because. (laughs) You look around during those times, what do you see around the ring? A bunch of little kids with headbands and green t-shirts on. That's it. He sold merch more than anybody else. Even though I think back then Punk was right there with him and Punk had cooler shirts because I'm an adult and I want to wear something, you know what I mean? Like the CM Punk stuff. But um, So I can see where both of those guys, some people would be like, yeah, they're overrated. And some guys would say like they're underrated if you dig. But like we said to us, they're both on our Mount Rushmore. You know, it's... Hogan was the 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 staple or the you know the the benchmark for what a WWE superstar is. Cena was the last Hogan. He really was. You know, and he might be the last the, one. They tried with Reigns, but I think it's too uh, it's, it's too tough. far gone. Yeah, that's gonna um, um, when we do a Q and A show next time. Somebody asked me, and I had this conversation with a friend of ours, Nemo, over text messaging. He asked like the one of the questions that the person asked me is is like is wrestling outside of diehards dead and i think it 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 is and i'll go into why i think so and i think television ratings over the last four months are proving to me why it is Mm -hmm. everybody's at home everybody has nothing else to do and it's one of the only forms of entertainment on aew nxt and wwe are producing the lowest ratings in the history of all all of them Mm -hmm. that's not a good sign to me that means you can't even in a pandemic draw in casual fans mm-hmm. that's that's a very bad sign to me yeah. i wonder if because I, I like i work with a guy i mean he has a daughter she doesn't watch wrestling or anything but he said he's like she doesn't have a tv in her room anymore because even when she's in the living room she's on the couch with her back towards it. she's buried in her phone so yeah i get that i think you get a lot of like teenagers who 
don't care about TV in general. Yeah. It's all social media, TikTok, all these like, you know, Instagram videos, like that's their entertainment now. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, we look at it where they're like we see the the numbers for AEW and NXT every week and they're they both hover around anywhere from six hundred and fifty thousand to eight hundred thousand viewers. And then you see like Raw has on a good, good week, two million. SmackDown's one seven. Different time, different place. Austin was pulling all four of those combined. I know. He was getting more. He's getting more. He's getting four point sevens while WCW is getting four point sixes. So you got nine million, you know, a, a nine point oh rating combined between two different companies, and now one company can't get that across all four of their shows. You know, it's he makes a great point. Outside of casuals, it might be dead, and I think it's losing a ton of casual fans. It, that's the problem is and they they've forgotten and we'll get into this in a full the few, full yeah, Q&A because yeah. I have a whole thing about it is they have forgotten all of them have forgotten how to create stars mm-hmm. and it's because I think of the micromanaging yeah. and that's where it goes and I and I know you and I have talked about this before where you know well why don't you just get out of PG I just don't think it's even feasible because we are in a PG culture yeah that the, the they couldn't do I'm trying to think here if Vince out of nowhere tomorrow woke up and said let's go back to attitude pal 20 not even 25% of the attitude era would be allowed on television today yeah. they they and I'm look a lot of where wrestling is today is to the fault of them i get that but they they have to comply because if they don't comply to current standards Wrestling can't survive without network television or yeah. a television contract. Mm-hmm. They will lose their television contract yeah. because nobody wants to deal with the cancel culture. With the cancel culture, yeah. And, but... So, you know, the last thing you need right now is for them to piss off somebody at Fox, and that's mm-hmm. gone. That's the majority of their income. Yeah. That's over a billion dollars. The, I mean, like we said, we're, we'll get into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with the Attitude Era, if they did – a couple weeks leading up to it with a PG-14 rating, but didn't go PG-14. Like, we're letting you know, here's your disclaimer at the beginning, what we're going to be getting into. Mm-hmm. Do another, how Vince came out and said, like, we're getting into a new era or something. Have Triple H come out and do that whole thing. Give you a warning. Yeah. This, can they do lingerie matches and all that sexual shit they used no. to? Absolutely not. No. But can Kevin Owens come out and give fingers? Yes. 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 Can they get a little edgier with the things they say? Yes. Can Some they blood? be? Yes. Yeah. Can they um, have homophobic, racist, like borderline? St- no, you no. can't do that. Shouldn't have done it then. But again, different time, different, different time, place. different place. But can you get out here and say some other things? Like, can they? You like know, you're a piece push of trash. the envelope. Yeah. 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 Like you're a piece of trash. Shit's thrown around on TV a lot more than it used to be. So mm-hmm. with your three-hour Raw, if your last segment that comes on at 1040 at night has Kevin Owens come out here and say, I'm going to kick the shit out of you or stop being such a piece of shit, it'll get people talking. If your eight-year-old's still up, that's your fucking problem. That's your problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Like, yep. Um, they I told agree. you this is what we're doing. You let them watch it. We gave you five weeks of a heads up. You know, mm-hmm. but again, we can we can get into that. Yeah, we'll get into all that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, my Shawn Michaels matches after you're done. Yeah, uh, go yeah. ahead. What are they? Uh, so, again, top five is never top five, but I'll try to give you. I got my five, and then I got a couple other ones. But uh, obviously, WrestleMania 25 mm-hmm. is we've talked about in our opinion the greatest match in wrestling mm-hmm. history. Um, WrestleMania 26. Again, wow. 25 never happened. 26 is probably Agreed. the greatest ever. Uh, right up there next to him is the Hell in a Cell with Taker. Yep. That's my favorite Hell in a Cell. It's one of my favorite matches. Mm-hmm. Um, the street fight with Triple H when he comes back and goes 40 minutes. Yep. They beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be a one-off, but it basically kicks off the second. A second career. Second career. And what we talked about was his better. Yeah. Better run, mm-hmm. and uh, you, one of your favorite matches. I still I love it. The SummerSlam with Hogan. <laughs> I love that match. So <laughs> is it's so good, and it's not a good in ring match, but it's not. when you it's a great watch. 
it's a great ending where afterwards Sean gets up and he's like, I had to know. Yeah. And Hogan shakes his hand like, okay. But it's like, you just made me look like an asshole for 20 <laughs> minutes. Um, that's one of my favorite Shawn Michaels matches to watch. Yes. And Angle and Jericho at Mania, uh, WrestleMania 20 with Benoit and Triple God, H. That's a good one. They're all great. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Ric Flair match at WrestleMania is great. Yep. Even though it's not in ring, it's not as good as it should be. But everything around that, the I'm sorry, I love you, is one of the greatest spots in WrestleMania history. Um, there's so many. Like, you know, he's, just, it, yeah. he's had classics up and down with Brett back in the day. Mm-hmm. So, I agree. Yeah, that was a, that's a great list. Um, but yeah, I want to thank you guys so much. I mean, that's going to wrap it up here for us. 